Let me give you the word that the Lord spoke to my heart and we'll minister this message to you this morning. He spoke to me, he said, America, your time has come to make a decision. Follow me or fall over Baal. The choice is yours and the next move you make will determine your future. Think it not strange that the events that surround you and your nation, excuse me, chaos and confusion are the daily bread of a wicked nation. Turmoil and crisis are soon to arrive, but few can see the early signs, nor can they hear the early warnings. My church has played the whore giving in, or excuse me, lying in the beds of foreign gods and giving herself over to the beast and his system. He said, my kingdom is not of this world and my people are from above, yet many choose to, to live below my standard. Awaken my church out of your slumber. Look to the hills for I am coming with sword and shield to fight for the final harvest and to protect what is mine. I encourage you again to listen to that <clears throat> and read over it again online as it gets uploaded and pray over it as what the Lord would speak to your heart concerning that message, that word. And uh, we are living in very dangerous days. There is no doubt about it. Father, thank you again for this opportunity to be in your house I just rejoice that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I rejoice that I'm with friends today and family. I, re I rejoice that we are in the kingdom for such a time as this. And we will look towards the hills. That's where our help comes from. It comes from you. Father, be glorified today and lead us into all truth. And in Jesus' name, everybody say amen and amen. Hallelujah. What an awesome God uh, he is to us always. The title of this message is called Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. I'm not speaking of <clears throat> a, a movie. Uh, we all remember the movie and the book. I'm speaking of beauty and the beast relating to the church, the beautiful church, the church of beauty, the church of blessings, the church of God. And the beast, which represents the system of the world and the wickedness and the things that are going on in our nation and around the world that is drawing the church away from its beauty and bringing it into a place of degradation. I think Jennifer did an awesome job. Those that are watching on YouTube right now, you need to go to our website and get on live stream in the archive and just hear as she exhorted us concerning Eli and concerning the hour in which the ark was taken. And I believe that is very uh, powerful truth in this day and it's not been preached enough and it's definitely not been preached at least in this hour, the reality of losing the presence of God and not even knowing it. And I wasn't gonna preach anything like that but uh, she just stirred within my spirit this reality and the church is, is in that situation with being taken from a place and position of God of power to a place where we're being prostituted and we're being led astray from the plans and the program that God has ordained from the foundations of the earth. We have an assignment on this earth. And if you look across the landscape of the Church of America today, it seems that our assignment has become more political than prophetic. It's become more being led towards a, an agenda than it is for the king of kings and for the reality of the lost souls of humanity. And I, I look across and I, and I read articles and I research and I become amazed how I see pastors who've gone from being preachers of the gospel to politicians. They've gone from being preachers who would lay hands on the sick and see them recover, that would cast out devils, speak in new tongues, and prophesy and begin to declare and decree the coming of the Lord Jesus to go from that to promoting an agenda and promoting a trend and political correctness. And it has brought me to the place and the realization that we are definitely living in the great falling away. 
We're living in the times and the seasons in which the prophets prophesied, they declared and decreed that there would be a time in the future when men would leave the love of God. They would leave the principles of God. They would leave the things of God and have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. So beauty and the beast, that's what we're going to preach on this morning and minister to you and those that are watching and listening in various parts of this nation and around the world. Jeremiah chapter 27, would you go there? Jeremiah chapter 27. I love you guys this morning. I love this house. I appreciate that to the moon and back and the moon beyond or something like that, to infinity beyond and then just love you and appreciate this house so much. And I love being your pastor. Thanks for letting me show up every Sunday and every Wednesday and giving me a key to the building. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 27. Hey, some pastors get a key to a U-Haul. Jeremiah chapter 27. Let's look at this beauty and the beast. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word unto Jeremiah from the Lord. I have to stop there for a minute because, again, we're an amazing season of dryness in the body of Christ where we can't find preachers who are willing to say, thus saith the Lord, to declare and decree the words of God regardless of what anybody thinks, regardless of what's going on around them, regardless of the committee, come on, regardless of the board, regardless of the denomination, regardless of the bishop, they are more concerned about saying what God has to say. And I believe it's high time that we rise up in the body of Christ. It doesn't, you don't have to be no preacher with a microphone in one hand and a Bible in the other. All you have to do is love the Lamb, Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, with all of your spirit, your soul, your mind, and your body, and be willing to stand up and be counted. I believe there's coming a day of great persecution where you're going to have to make a decision to make a choice. I want to do it now. I want to decide now that I'm going to stand up for the things of God, that I'll stand up in the face of adversaries and, and all kinds of craziness and wickedness and declare the word of the Lord. So Jeremiah, he was there, and he began to receive the word of the Lord. Again, this is what I pray today. I, I feel like echoing Jennifer this morning because I pray the same thing on her birthday, that we would find men and women of God who are willing to stand up and speak the hard things in love, in truth, but speak the hard things. You know, we've gone away from discipline today. As you know, across the body of Christ and concerning homes, and at least in the world as well, where we, we, we've, we've gotten away from discipline. We don't have any control. We don't have any, any structure within life. And because of that, things grow wild and they run wild. So it is in the church, in our relationship with God. If we don't get a place, in the place again of discipline with him, if we don't get into that place of relationship, man, we're going to lose everything that we've ever worked for. We're going to lose everything that we strive for as a church and as a people. And so we need the word of the Lord. And so the word came to Jeremiah. Aren't you glad for the word of the Lord? Came into Jeremiah, and the Lord said, Thus saith the Lord unto me. He said, Make thee bonds and yokes and put them upon thy neck and send them to the kings of Edom and to the kings of Moab and to the kings of the Amorites and to the king of Tyrus and to the king of Zidon by the hand of the messengers which came to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah, the king of Judah. So let me give you some backdrop here. The word of the Lord comes to Jeremiah, and the reason for that is because these kings got together with their ambassadors, and they wanted to bring forth a coalition or a confederacy to fight against Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. And so they came to Judah, and they were petitioning the king, but the word came to Jeremiah and said, Jeremiah, I want you to take a yoke. I want you to get something symbolic, and I want you to prove to these here that they will find themselves in bondage and in captivity if they don't follow my leading and my will. 
again, this is a understanding for you and I today. The reason our nation is in this craziness and this chaos and the crisis that we're in is because we've not been willing to put on the yoke of God. We've not been willing to follow his way. We've not been willing to follow his plan and his precepts according to the word of God. We do what we want to do when we come into the house of God. Preachers do what they want to do. They preach what they want to preach. And we can't find steadfast, unmovable people full of faith. How many of all remember people that you grew up with in church who were strong right there with you? Today they're gone. Come on, they're selling cars. They're, they've left life. They've, left, they, they've checked out for Christianity, Christian life. They, they've left the things of righteousness and they pursued the things of the world because they weren't solid in their foundation. So he says to Jeremiah, I want you to do this because these ambassadors are trying to come against my plan. And I want you to see this and understand this this morning, and I will bring it out in clarity by the time you leave this building, that God has a plan for America to go into captivity. God has a plan for America to go into judgment. God has a plan for the things that you're watching right now due to our sin and wickedness, but also for his plans for harvest. You see, because all of our slick-haired Chinese shoe preachers and all of our programs, our multi-million dollar buildings and projects and everything we do has not brought America one step closer to the cross, has not brought us one day closer to revival, has not brought us one closer to the manifestation of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. It hasn't. If we would just take an inventory and be honest and be transparent and look again across the landscape of our preachers and churches, they're not packed out in full. If they are, they're full of dead bones. Come on now. They're full of hype and programs and entrapments and entitlements instead of people coming into the presence of God hungry like you are here this morning, thirsty for the things of God. And so these ambassadors got together and they were trying to bring Judah out of the plan of God. And I know that's kind of a hard word to say, and people kind of scratch their head. They say, what do you mean there's judgment? What do you mean that God is using that as a plan to refine and bring his church into the last day assignment? That's exactly what God is doing, because everything else we've ever tried to do isn't working. Come on, church. It's a hard word, but it's the truth. Watch this. He said, send them to the king of Edom. Send them all the way through all these ambassadors. Send them all out. Verse four, and command them to say unto their masters, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Who said it? The Lord of hosts. The God of Israel. Thus shall you say unto your masters, I have made the part, I have made the earth. Now I have to stop there. He says, say this unto your masters. I want you to say exactly what I'm saying to your masters. I want you to say exactly what I'm saying to the masses. I want you to say exactly what I'm saying to the body of Christ. Again, we need to find people that can say what God says. And if we do what God says, and if we act accordingly, we'll have the blessings of God. It's missing today. Watch this. He says, command them. Go to the masters. Verse 5, I had made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon, uh, upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm and have given it unto whom it seemed, what say it? Meat unto me. In other words, I'm going to do exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it the way I want it to be, and there's nothing you can do. There's nothing that I can say. There's nothing that we can, you can try to preach, and we can try to pray, and try to push it out of the way, but there's no pushing the hand of God. When God commands something, it's immovable. When God declares something, it's going to happen. When God declares that he is going to create this or create that, he's going to move this way or move that way, he is determined to do it. And so Jeremiah is in this position to tell them this. Don't you know that's hard for a preacher sometimes to say? I'm just giving you the foundation, bringing you into historical understanding. But Jeremiah had to stand before all these ambassadors. Imagine that. 
standing before all these people who already had an agenda, they already had a plan, they already had an assignment, they already had a mission, they already had a purpose in their hearts, and he had to stand before them and say, let me tell you what God has to say. This is our problem today in the body of Christ is finding people that are willing to stand up and declare the truth in an hour, in a day when the plans have already been made. Come on, how many of all know that when you talk to your family, they already made up their mind politically. They've made up their mind about the end times. They've made up their mind about church. They've made up their mind about the prophetic. And you have to stand there and declare and decree the word of the Lord. Hey, somebody's got to do it. Amen. Watch this. Verse 6. And now have, uh, have I given all this land into the hand of who? Nebuchadnezzar. Wait a minute. Now here's Jeremiah. He's standing before the ambassadors. These are people of renowned honor. These are people of power. These are people of, of, of great authority. And he says, I want you to tell them, even though they came here with an agenda, I want you to tell them that God has another plan for them. Beauty and the beast. The church today has to stand up just like Jeremiah and look at a generation and look at a people who are convinced that everything's going to be wonderful, that are convinced that life is going to go on. We're going to continue to cycle through and we're going to have all this prosperity. We're going to have all these different things and we don't believe that there's an end. We don't believe there's a day of judgment. We don't believe that the Lamb of God is coming. Because if we really believed that Jesus was coming, I think the church would live a whole lot differently. I think we would live a whole lot differently. We'd pray harder. We would love longer. We would give more. We would do more. We would stay up later and get up earlier. We would build the kingdom of God knowing that the King of kings and the Lord of lords is coming. We'd pray for our families more. We would do more for the kingdom if we really believed the Lord Jesus Christ was coming. I really believe that we would do more too if we believed judgment was here. I really do. I believe that we would put our hands upon the gospel plow and we would never look back moving forward by faith saying I'm going to complete the task and the assignment that God has given me on this earth. I'm not going to give up, give out. I'm going to continue to move forward until I hear well done that good and faithful servant. Come on somebody. That's what I'm looking forward to hearing is well done that good and faithful servant. You got to do something to hear it. I said, you got to do something to hear it. You got to do something well in order to hear well done. And so Jeremiah was in this spot. He's got to tell these ambassadors. He's got to tell folks. If he were here today, he'd put his finger towards the camera and any other media platform he could find. And he would say, let me explain to you, your agenda may seem honorable. Your plan may sound great. Your dreams may sound wonderful. But here is what the Lord has to say. America will never be great again. Judah will never be great again. Israel will never be great again. Man will never be great again without God. And we stand here today from Livonia, Georgia at Ignited Church doing our best through the anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost to declare and decree to a nation that has already made up his mind for the most part. You know it because you talk to people all the time. You talk to them and their minds are just totally convinced that we're going to get through this time period. It's going to be just another glorious 10, 20 years of our existence. And they base it on Things that have no real foundation called the economy and money. Listen, money has wings. Oh, you didn't know that. Money has wings. Money can fly away from you. What you have today can be taken from you tomorrow. And so we stand in this same position today where Jeremiah was declaring to a generation and to a part of society that says, you know what, I just don't believe the bad days are here. You must be sleeping upside down in a post hole if you think these are good days. Watch this. Y'all okay? Some of y'all waterlogged from yesterday. Go ahead and shake yourself off. Amen. Watch this. He said, I'm giving the land unto the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. 
Wait, what land are you talking about? The land that you're trying to hold on to. Wait a minute now. I've got ambassadors here. We got a confederacy here. We got a, a group of people here that are going to stomp on Nebuchadnezzar. We got a plan. We got the right man in office. We got the right evangelical support system. We got the right money being raised. We got all this engine moving. We got the political power behind us. We got the winds of change behind us. We're going to move forward into our vision. But Jeremiah, Jeremiah pulls up with a yoke around his neck. And he says, let me explain something to you dudes. Let me explain something to you fellas. It's not going to be the way that you think it's going to be. It's going to change. Oh, it's not going to change the way you want it to be. It's going to change the way God wants it to be because he gave this land into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. I'm prophesying to you this morning that God has given this land into the hands of the Babylonians. He's given this land into the hands of the beast system. He's given this land into the hands of the Antichrist and all the minions and all the plans that God has for judgment of this nation. Oh, that felt good. That was like a lead balloon landing on some folks' head. But it's a reality, honey. And I'm telling you, when resistance comes, I love it because you need to keep pushing it and keep pushing it and keep pushing the truth and speaking the word of the Lord like Jeremiah did. Keep putting on that yoke, handing that yoke to them saying, look, here's the word of the Lord. You may not like me right now, but you're going to like me later. You may not believe me now, but you're going to believe me later. Keep on pushing and telling your family. Keep on loving them and praying for them and telling them the change that you're looking for is not what you think that's coming. Nebuchadnezzar will get the land. Boy, isn't that hard? It's hard in a nation where we, we're people of hope and we should be people of hope. But when you look at things in, a, in the wrong way through the rose-colored glasses and you look at things with an agenda that is selfish and an agenda that does not include God and an agenda that does not see scripture, then you will find yourself on the wrong side always of God. It's so hard to say this because we live again in the nation that just does not want to receive this. They just do not want to receive the reality that God is going to wrap this thing up, that God is going to wrap it up in victory. And that's the message. The message is not doom and gloom. The message is hope. The message is revival. The message is, is a final restoration of all things. And the message is harvest. Because I don't know about you, there are just some people that have to learn the hard way. Don't look at your neighbor, but some of us have to learn the hard way. Some of us have got bruises and bumps and scars and scrapes because we had to learn it the hard way. And we're in that hour today, just like Jeremiah, where we have people that are hell-bent, if you will, in their mindset, and they're so politically demonized, and they're so motivated with passion. Some of it is rightly put, and some of it is not, but they push towards an agenda, thinking that this is going to please God, and that this is going to bring about a utopia, and a Christian nation, and a change, but it's not. And Jeremiah had to do that. How many of y'all have ever felt like Jeremiah? Amen. I feel like Jeremiah this morning. I feel like him standing before all the ambassadors. Everybody's got their little portfolio and their attache and they got all their documents from the king and it's been stamped and had the signet ring put upon it. It's been sealed and they've got messages from the commander in chief to go gather this confederacy and make a plan to stop God's plan. Are you here today? See, sometimes when you and I pray, and if you, you need to get a part of ISM and listen to our, uh, get involved in uh, the intercession class uh, maybe next time, but, but, but sometimes we try to pray against the plan of God and that'll never work. Sometimes when you're, you're, somebody's going through some issues in life, don't pray that it eases up necessarily, especially if they don't know the Lord. Pray that God deals with them. Pray that God opens their eyes during the time of trial and testing and tribulation and trouble. Pray that God would just push on the pressure. Don't harm, harm them too bad. Don't hurt them too bad, Lord, but pressure them. Because some folks have to learn it the hard way. And Jeremiah was in that situation where he had to tell them the word of the Lord. 
Can you imagine? He's right there at a Make America Great rally. Come on, somebody. I don't care what political rally. Could you imagine Jeremiah pulling up in a rally, a political rally? I don't care what side it is. Everybody rooting and, and, and ranting and raving that they're going to change things on this side and this group's going to change it on that side. And then all of a sudden, Jeremiah pulls up with a bunch of yoke. <laughs> Woo. I'm telling you, that's what we need some preachers to do, to stand up with some yoke, to stand up with the truth and declare it to this generation. So watch this. He said, I'm going to give the land to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. What did he say next? My servant. He said, I'm going to give this land to the hands of King Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. Wait a minute now. I thought Nebuchadnezzar was a bad king. I thought Nebuchadnezzar was from Babylon. I thought Nebuchadnezzar was full of the devil. I thought Nebuchadnezzar was on the wrong side. But on this occasion, God says, I'm going to use Nebuchadnezzar as my servant. I'm going to anoint him and appoint him his portion to bring my people to judgment. I'm going to use him to bring my people to a place where they recognize and receive me again. You see, God will use anything and everything in your life and my life to bring us closer to him. Sometimes he allows that pressure just to get a little stronger. He allows that fire to get stoked up a little hotter. He allows that issue to be on you a little longer in order for us to get closer to him. See, sometimes we don't understand the methodology of God. Never, never misunderstand his love for you. He has an amazing love and he loves folks, but he's going to pressure this nation just like he used Nebuchadnezzar. So I find that amazing. He said, Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. I thought he was the enemy. And the beasts of the field, have I given him to serve him? So he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it all to him. I'm going to let his whole system be rampant through the nation just like it is today. You see, we don't operate in a system of godliness in America. Again, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. We live in a system that kills babies. We live in a system that, 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 that is not for uh, righteousness and holiness. It is not for building people. It is not for raising up righteousness in a nation. We're watching pedophilia and all kinds of craziness take place all around our nation. And watching, uh, the other day I was researching and watching the, these drag queens and story time at the libraries and dancing at parties. They're now uh, promoting them to go out to parties. You can go ahead and rent you a drag queen. Are you here today? I know that's not in the multitude and the majority of the people, but it's the reality of a nation that has gone so far, that has gone so far away from God and for righteousness. It's heartbreaking as we listen to these stories. But Americans don't really care yet. Verse 8. And it shall come to pass that the nations and kingdom which will not serve, everybody say not serve, the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence until I have consumed them by whose hand? His hand. Again, I try, to put Nebuch I try to put Jeremiah in this position, standing at some type of rally somewhere or standing in Congress or standing somewhere in, in a position of power and looking at all the cats that have their plans and look at all the politicians and people in power and stand up and say, guess what? The thing that you're fighting against and the, the things that you don't want to happen in your nation are going to happen because God has a plan to use that to bring you to his place his side and his relationship and to bring harvest to a nation. That is absolutely the most craziest thing when you look at it biblically and you look at it practically. 
But God said, Jeremiah, that's what I want you to do. I want you to stand up and tell them that. And so he begins to tell them that it's going to happen. It's going to be upon you. And he said, you will be punished for what? Not following the captivity. Now think for a minute and put this around your own mind. Wrap your mind around this understanding. This sounds absolutely crazy that God would require these people, Judah and the others surrounding them, to put themselves under the neck of the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar. Here's what we must understand, that God is requiring us to follow his plans of the last days, that we're to follow the prophetic reality of the day and stop trying to manipulate God and tr stop trying to politicize God and get to a place where we recognize and realize this is the yoke that I must wear. This is the burden I must carry. This is the, 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 the plan of God. No matter what comes my way, I'm going to be faithful to carry my cross. I'm going to be faithful to preach the gospel. I'm going to be faithful to love him with all of my spirit, my soul, my mind, and my body, and I'm going to carry as many people with me to heaven as I possibly can. I'm going to plunder hell so I can, plund I can populate heaven. I'm going to bless people when people come against me, when they persecute me and say evil things. I will bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will exalt the Lord my God, and I will preach this truth and carry my cross to the end, and not be afraid what anybody says or how anybody looks, because my faith faith is not in man, but my faith is in God. I don't fear no man, but I fear an almighty God. Amen. See, I, we, we need that today. And Jeremiah is bringing that tenacity through this particular chapter 27 and revealing to us in this hour that that's what we must do, especially in a nation where we have such hope in man. Let me try that again. We have such hope in in man, we have such hope in women. We have such hope in power and leadership instead of putting our trust and our hope in the Father. I'm not saying we don't love and we don't pray and we don't respect authority, but we don't bow down to them. We follow the plan of God, and whatever that plan is, we're going to follow it. Verse 9, are you still in the Bible? Therefore, hearken not ye to your prophets nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, ye shall not serve the king of Babylon. Now listen to me. This flies in the face what Jeremiah is saying against all the popular preachers of the hour. Think about this with me. Jeremiah, he is one of the very few of the prophets that God says, I want you to go to the courts. I want you to go to the large place. I want you to go to the place of power, to the king's palace. And I want you to stand up and say something that nobody else is saying. Thanks, God. You ever been there? Thanks, God. He said, I want you to go do that, and I want you to declare and decree that everybody else that is speaking the opposite of what you're saying, Jeremiah, is wrong. That's pretty bold, isn't it? That's pretty bold, but that's exactly what is happening in this hour, prophetically, not just here, but other places. Men are standing up, women are standing up, and they're saying things that the popular folks aren't saying. They're declaring what the Lord says, and he says, you will go into captivity, you will go into judgment, I'm going to deal with you, there will be an economic holocaust, there'll be famine in the land, there'll be invasion and there'll be war, there'll be all kinds of craziness and chaos in your streets, and everything that you're watching in Washington has already been prophesied. Woo! He talk about not having many friends. But he said, this is what I want you to do. You tell them that everybody else that speaks against this, that speaks against this truth and speaks against this warning and speaks against this scriptural prophetic reality is wrong. Now you better know God. You better know God is on your side and God has talked to you and told you. And I'm here to tell you today, God has spoken to you through his word. God has spoken to us through his word. He has spoken to the prophetic community that we are going into captivity, that we are going into the position where Nebuchadnezzar 
will be over us. You say, what is Nebuchadnezzar to us? I'm just speaking of a beast system. I'm speaking of a system that is going to bring us into bondage greater than we're already watching today. Just think for a minute, folks. Do you really think that we're going to vote our way out of the mess we're in? Do you really think you're going to vote out all the bad? Do you really think that you're going to change everything in Washington? Do you really think we're just going to flip over a new leaf and everybody's going to sing Kumbaya, my Lord, and the drag queens are going to go away and their little fairy wings are going to carry them off and we're going to have all kinds of wonderful life together? Do you really think so? Do you think Hollywood all of a sudden is going to get baptized in the Holy Ghost and power of God and then just begin to make movies that are righteousness and holy? Do you really think so? Do you really think our country music industry is going to change and and sing songs about the love of Jesus Christ and not fornicate in the back of a pickup truck? Do you really think hip hop is going to change? Do you really think our sports arenas and sports entertainment and all of these entrapments of life, do you really think they're going to change? But see, there's people that I'm preaching to right now that have a mindset and they're so determined. They are so full of passion for the political agenda of our hour. They're so full of passion for seeing a change. And some may be, have the right heart about it, but many are wrong. And you say, why does that matter now, Pastor? Why bring that up now? Because it matters how you speak. It matters how you live. It matters how you pray. It matters how you believe. Because if you believe a lie, if you believe the diviners, if you believe the sorcerers, if you believe the prophets and the warlocks and the witches and all those that stand up on television and preach an opposite gospel, then you will find yourself on the other side of the shipwreck. Yes, you will. You won't be ready. You won't provide for your home. You won't provide for your family or your neighbors. You won't put things away. You won't get ready for the great harvest. You won't even be a soul winner. Why? Because you don't care about souls. You care about your next meal, your next paycheck. You care about your 401k. You care about your retirement. You care about your future. You care about all these things because life will go on like it is. Wish I had somebody say amen in this Catholic church. It's the truth. I deal with it day in and day out, and you do too, with people who are so strong-willed. And I'm talking to church folk. You're right. You have a right to your own opinion just like I do. But when we go against the plans of God, when we go against the prophetic and the will of God, then we find ourselves kicking against him and we find ourselves in opposition, which brings us into trouble. I truly believe that the the reason the body of Christ is so divided in this hour is because of politics. It's disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting to see church and family members and folks torn apart over a political agenda instead of looking at the word of God and recognizing and realizing that this thing one day wraps up, that this day, one day, this whole thing comes to a point of judgment. And wishing it wouldn't be so doesn't change it. Watch this with me. He said, therefore, hearken you not to your prophets. Don't listen to these guys. Don't listen to these dreamers. Well, I had a dream, man. I I have a dream that in the next 10 years, we're just going to change everything. We're going to make the infrastructure better. How long have you been hearing that when you busted your tooth out on a pothole? (laughs) Come on, somebody. How many more dreams can be given? How many more promises can be given till we finally wake up and realize that our hope is only in Jesus Christ? You see, you can't legislate love. You can't legislate love. All those things I mentioned earlier, and I know people get upset about it, but I'm telling you, they will be here and they will increase and we're not going to change it. Society is in decay. You won't talk about the swamp. The swamp ain't in D.C. The swamp is America. You can't drain it. You better learn how to navigate in the swamp. Come on, somebody. Beauty, 
and the beast. We've connected with the beast as a church. We've connected with unrighteousness and we put people in power pray, praying and believing that they can take us out of bondage and take us out of the plan of God and that is the wrong view. I have hope just like you do, and I want to see things uh, be, be, be wonderful and love life, but I'm telling you, there comes a time when you look at reality and you say it's not going to be so, especially when you look at the word of God and where we are in the last days. He said, your enchanters and your sorcerers would speak unto you saying, you shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a What? A lie unto you to remove you from your land and that I should drive you out and you should perish. Wow. When you begin to look at this, you, 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 you kind of think somebody's got something wrong over here. Somebody, somebody ain't thinking straight. You mean to tell me, God, you're going to allow Nebuchadnezzar to rule over us you're going to allow him to come in with his armies. You're going to allow him to bring captivity to us. But that captivity is the answer to live in the land? How many of y'all know people thought Jeremiah was crazy? Just like the folks you know, when you begin to tell them and say, this is part of judgment. What is happening in Washington is not left and right paradigm. What is happening is judgment and exposure. It does not matter the outcome. It doesn't matter the beginning. All that matters is the end, and the end will be done according to the will of God. But we can't see that. And because we can't see that, we come defensive, or we come offensive, or we become angry, and we separate ourselves, and we lose focus on what God has told us to do in these last days. I'm watching it all the time with preachers. I'm watching it all the time with church people. They lose their focus of why you're here on earth and why we're here in America. I'm not here in America so I can get more stuff. I'm here in America so I can use what God has given us to preach the gospel to the nations of the earth and as reach as many people as I possibly can before they go to hell. That's your job too. Your job isn't to get new stuff. If you get new stuff, that's a bonus, thank God. But that isn't the reason we're alive. It's just a blessing of God. But the church has become so divided. It's become so distracted. We've lost focus on the purposes of the kingdom and the purpose of life. And it breaks my heart as a pastor. It breaks my heart as a Christian. It breaks my heart as a citizen to watch people get embattled and entrenched by somebody that is here today and gone tomorrow. Are you listening to me? This is why I said when all this came out, I made, a, made just a little bit of a statement. I said, you better continue to love people. You better get your mind focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. You better get focused on the kingdom. Do what you need to do. Keep your hands upon the gospel plow. And if somebody wants to call you this and call you that, that's fine. If they have an agenda and a plan politically, whatever you want to do, that's fine. But for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And we're going to keep our eyes focused on the last days and keep our eyes focused on reaching people, no matter where they may be. But folks are so divided, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. For they prophesy a lie to remove you from the land. Again, that is so crazy. I don't understand this. Well, let me explain something to you about the kingdom. To God, things that should be up or down. Come on now. He does things opposite. M your mind and your flesh tells you to hold on. God says give it all. Help me, church. Your mind says let me push that person out of the way. But God says no, you make a way for them. The things of the kingdom of God are opposite. And so when I see people, especially in the church and on television, and they're pushing for an agenda, I know that they're wrong. I know that their heart may be right as far as their love and their plans and those things, but prophetically and scripturally, they're wrong for pushing an agenda that is opposite of what God wants to do in this nation. You'll catch that later. 
And you'll see it manifest even more in the coming days. But I'll move on. Verse 11. But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon. Watch this. They bring their neck under that yoke. What is he talking about? He's not talking about just going into captivity. He's talking about obedience. If you don't understand this message, I hope this part brings clarity to you that God is saying, I'm going to use these things for the furtherance of my kingdom, for my plans of the last day. You just put your neck where it belongs. You just follow me. You just be led wherever the lamb goes. And wherever the lamb goes, be satisfied. Again, that's a hard message because people want to kick against it and they want to come up with their own ideals. And God's saying, this is what I want you to do. Watch what he says. He said, you put your neck under him, the king of Babylon, and you served in that land, saith the Lord, and they shall till it and they shall dwell therein. Verse 11, do you see that? They shall dwell therein. What's he talking about? He's talking about settle it. Just settle it. Settle it. I made up my mind a long time ago, I'm going to settle it. I don't like everything that's happening in my country. I don't like things that are happening in the world, but I'm settling it in my heart that I am going to live for God and his kingdom and seek you first his kingdom and all these other things are going to be added unto me. I'm not going to worry about what's happening all around me, but I'm going to stay focused on his plans. I know this is reaching somebody because many contact me of the struggles and all the fights that go on in family, man, over, over the last days and over the Bible. It's so sad to hear it when all you have to do is follow the word. It's very easy. It's right there for you. If the things that are being preached are not lining up with what's going on in the world, then discard it. But if what's being preached is amening and confirming what's going on around you, I think I would begin to listen. I think I would follow the plan. I think I would follow what Jeremiah was saying to those ambassadors. Put your neck underneath the yoke and let God be God and he will lead you to where he wants you to go. You can apply this message to any aspect of my life and your life. We don't always like what we're handed, but sometimes you've got to put your neck underneath it. Sometimes you've got to put that yoke upon you and straighten your back out like a T-rail and ask God to strengthen you and take that plow and plow forward, never looking back. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. You're not going to like it, but I'm going to use Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 12, and I speak also to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him and his, and his people and live. Check this out. Jeremiah not only went to the ambassadors, he went to the man himself. I said he didn't just go to the little messengers, he went to the master. And again, this is the message that we should bring to the whole world and to the nations of the earth to follow the plan of God. He said, bring it underneath the yoke. And what's going to happen? He said, you're going to live. Why will you die? Verse 3, 13. Why will you die ye uh, and by the people and by the sword, uh, by the famine and by the pestilence? As the Lord has spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon. Therefore, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that speak unto you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they shall prophesy a lie unto you. So he mentions it twice. He said, Don't follow those who prophesy these things that tell you that it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a wonderful day that we're going to take legislation into our own hands and change things and make it awesome. Again, it's not a message of lacking hope. It's just realization that my hope is in the Lord, that my strength and the promise of the future is not in an entity or a people or a group or an idea theology or a philosophy it is put in Jesus Christ and Christ alone oh this message needs to be preached by pastors all over America putting our hope back in the Lord Jesus Christ 
I'm not saying forfeit things that have been given to you in governance. I'm just talking about the reality of going back to the basics and going back to the cross and going back to the altar and going back to the relationship with God and saying, God, I love you more than the church building. I love you more than the salary. I love you more than the benefits. I love you more than the media and the accolades and the applause. I love you more than anything. I love you more than my job. I love you more than my family members. I love you more than anything, Lord God. I love you. I love you. I love you. We're missing that part because we're so caught up in what's happening around us politically, not only on the world, but also within the body of Christ and the church. Some of those pastors that are watching me right now that listen to me because they've told me that they listen to me. You're so caught up with your board or your denomination. You can't be free. You need to break free and find yourself a relationship with God and pursue him like you pursued him when you first were born again. Most preachers don't do it because they're afraid of what people will say. They're afraid of losing things. They're afraid of what will happen and, and, and get fired from your job. Come on, getting fired may be the best thing that ever happened to you. Leaving that church may be the best thing that ever happened to you. Starting you a home church may be the best thing that ever happened to you. You see, we need a shaking in the body of Christ. Beauty and the beast, we're so tied into the beast system, we've lost our beauty. The church looks so much like the world and you can't tell the difference. But Jeremiah came with an earth-shaking message. Think of this with me. He came with a message that was against a trend. And I'm telling you, in this hour, the message of Jesus Christ and the last day church and the last day plans of God through judgment, that is kicking against the trends. And that, my friends, is the truth of the hour. You better go with prophetic and forget popular. You better go with what God is saying and what's trending in heaven and not trending on earth or on some type of Christian blog site. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. If you really love God and you really serve him, you'll never be popular. You'll never be popular. You're going to kick dirt in somebody's face. You're going to throw up some dust and make somebody mad. You're going to ruffle some feathers. You're going to pull that little hair right behind their neck. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Make a grown man holler. But sometimes that's what we have to do, and especially in this hour. And that's what Jeremiah had to do. He had to speak to a generation of people that were stiff-necked. They were so engrafted in, 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 in and so encrusted, if you will, into the agenda of the kings that they thought that they could kick against God's plans. And I'm warning the body of Christ, let it flow. Let God do what he's going to do. Do not get in the way of God's plans. Don't join this evangelical bandwagon that's hitting the drums and telling you to give all kinds of incantations and prayers and mantras to God when it is against his plan and his will. Amen. You'll see. You'll see. Watch this now. Can y'all handle me for just a little more? I know y'all finally woke up, but watch this. Verse 14, I love you. Therefore, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that speak unto you, saying, you shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. It sounded so good the first time, I read it again. Verse 15, for I have not sent them, saith the Lord. What did he say? I haven't sent them, but they're wearing prophet clothes. They drove up in the preacher's car. They had a Caddy or a Lexus or a Hummer or a Bentley. They looked like preachers. They had preacher clothes on, preacher ties, preacher shoes, preacher hair. They looked like preachers and prophets, didn't they? Yeah, but I didn't send them. How do you know he didn't send them? Because of what they said. Come on, church. They look like godliness. They look like preachers. And that's what gets me. People get enamored by what they see on television and the preachers and all the multi-million dollar buildings and all the stuff they have. And they go, oh, it's got to be God. No, it's not. Some of the most Holy Ghost filled preachers who can pay, preach the paint off the wall are in little storefronts right now. Preaching their brains out right at this hour, loving God and loving their people, and they don't have even a Kodak camera. They don't have all kinds of media platforms. They just love God. They're on fire for the Holy Ghost, and they're reaching their community. But America, we are some of the most gullible people. 
because we must have it glitter. If it glitters, it's God. Are you here? It's I didn't send them. They're prophesying their own lies. They're lying. For I have not sent them, saith the Lord, yet they prophesy a lie in my name. Sound like prophets, don't they? Well, he said, he said, Jesus, he said, God bless America. Come on, somebody. Hear a political campaign. God bless America. Woo, he's a Christian. In God we trust. Yay! We have watered down the understanding of what a Christian is because we're so eager to have somebody lead us. We're so eager for a pastor to love us and to shepherd us and be there and, 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 and do all those things they're supposed to do that we're gullible and we receive anybody into our lives instead of listening to what they say, not by how they look. Beauty and the beast. We've turned our beauty into a disgrace because we've, we've embraced these things in the body of Christ and these charlatans and these people who rape the church and they steal from the church and they send us on an agenda of a false hope over the abyss. When the Jeremiah's are crying in the wilderness, the John the Baptists are crying in the wilderness and they're crying out, follow the way of the lamb. And the way of the lamb is always against trend. Always, always, always. Because trends are something that are happening in real time. Scripture is prophetic and forever. It doesn't have to trend because it is the trend. It's patented. God is unmovable. He's, he's unchangeable. He's incredible also. We've been duped. I'm telling you and I'm preparing this church for what's coming down the road. You're not going to like what you are going to see, but you will be prepared in this house for it. Changing of the guard is coming. Watch this. Are you still here? You, got it? you all right? He said, uh, they prophesy a lie in my name that I might drive you out and that you might perish, ye and the prophets that prophesy unto you. And I spake to the priests and to all the people saying, thus saith the Lord, hearken not to the words of your prophets and your television preachers that prophesy unto you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house shall shortly, watch this, I gotta hurry because you gotta go, the vessels of the house of the Lord, they shall what? They shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. He said it again. Here's the deal. The prophets of the hour were saying that we're going to recuperate. We're going to be restored. We're going to go back to our former glory. We're going to make everything new again. We're going to have the presence of God and the vessels back into the temple. We're going to go back into this quasi type of revival. In other words, we can sin like we want to sin and do like we want to do, but we're going to have at least a little bit of God. And Jeremiah says, that ain't going to happen. You ain't getting back the vessels. But the prophets, the false prophets, they stood up and they screamed even louder. We're going to have America great again. We're going to have the church great again. We're going to have the nation great again. When Jeremiah puts his finger and points towards the window and says, look outside your window, honey. It ain't that good and it ain't that great. You see, that's kicking against the pricks and that's going against the trend and folks don't want to hear it when it's right before you in living color. He said, don't follow them. Don't follow those who lead you into a false hope, but follow those that are preaching the hard truth. Again, it wasn't easy for Jeremiah and it ain't easy for you, 
but you need to do it. Get off of these television programs and talking heads that pollute your mind and make it like marshmallow. You so confused, you don't know what to believe. You go on this one channel, they say this, another channel says that. Conspiracy here and conspiracy there. I told you last week, all them folks do that stuff and they fight, and next thing you know, they're playing golf together. While you're mad as that place and pulled out everybody's hair and, and mad and you ain't talking to nobody and fussing and cussing and all these different things, and, and they writing books together and stuff. And you look stupid. Let, let me just say this in my passing and then my, my 13 closing remarks. I'm going to tell you something. When them folks are long and gone and they done left your life, the mess you made, you're going to have to deal with it. The enemies you made and the separation of friends that you made, you, you're going to have to deal with that thing. The ideals that you had, the, the, the bitterness and all the stuff that goes on with this wrangling, you're going to have to deal with it in your heart while they're long gone. I choose to keep my heart clean. I choose to keep my heart right and follow what God is saying and not worry about what everybody else is saying. If you don't believe and you don't like the way I preach and you don't like the way I believe, you got a right to do what you want to do. Is anybody here? And this is the same attitude that Jeremiah had. Jeremiah said, I, I love you, man, but I'm going to tell you what God says to say. I love you. Now, I, I want you to go to your masters and you tell them, but, but this, this is the truth. Watch this. I'm, I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm trying. I'm trying to get out of here. Some of y'all look hungry. Watch this. Hearken not unto them. Verse 17. Serve the king of Babylon and live. Wherefore should this city be laid waste? But if they be prophets, here's what I want you to see. If they be prophets, true prophets, and the word of the Lord be with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and at Jerusalem go not to Babylon. In other words, if they are really prophets of God and they really love the Lord and they really serve him and they're really telling the truth, they would be people of intercession to say, God, I do want you to restore. God, I want you to do what you want to do. But they completely understand that his plan and his will is going to be done. There's none of us that are walking this path that I'm speaking of right now desire anything bad to happen to anybody. My prayer is, God, have mercy in the midst of judgment. My prayer is, God, protect your people, protect the church, protect the flock, but expose those who are unrighteous. Expose every one of them. Because I don't have an agenda. I'm not left and I'm not right. I'm straight down the middle through the cross of Jesus Christ. And you better find yourself in that same position or you're going to look very foolish on either side. And then finally... That's my second close, right? I get three. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, concerning the pillars and concerning the sea, concerning the, the base, the bases, and concerning the residue of the vessels that remain in the city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took not when he carried away the captive. Watch verse 21. Yea, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and of Jerusalem. They shall be carried to Babylon, and there shall they be until the day that I visit them, saith the Lord. Then will I bring them up and restore them to this place. In other words, I'm going to do what I want to do, the way I want to do it, when I want to do it, and you can't do anything about it. You better deal with it. Very hard words that Jeremiah had to speak. And very hard words we have to speak today to a nation that is going to go through even more crisis and chaos than we've already seen. You haven't seen anything yet. And my prayer is that you would be on the right side of truth 
and not on the wrong side of a political agenda and a false hope. You better follow the Bible and what the Bible says of the last days. If you're watching right now, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Today's the day of salvation. Today's the day to give your life to him. I don't care how far away you've gone and no matter what you've ever done, he loves you with an amazing love. If you're backslidden, come on. Today's the day to come home. Prodigal son, the Lord loves you. Prodigal daughter, the Lord loves you. He loves you with amazing love, and I pray today you make that decision. Father, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to deliver this message, the beauty and the beast. We're in a very dangerous hour, Father God. So many rumors are swirling around. So many things are happening. So many moving parts are happening in this nation. It is proof of a nation that is in decay. Where there is confusion, there is every evil work. Help us, Father, to walk in the middle, carrying our cross and loving everybody every day, preaching truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I love you. Blessings to you. I'll see you Wednesday. Blessings.